Hello, Tarnished. I will be spoiling locations and bosses that I've encountered so far, so if you're on the fence about playing, I implore you to personally experience this game, and I hope your initial experience isn't as frustrating as mine. But odds are, it probably will be. My name is Kyle, and I hate Elden Ring. However, I still regard it as worthy of its 10 out of 10. And I'll explain why. I encourage you to comment now and after you've heard my perspective to comment again, whether via an edit or a reply, because I want to know where you stand. Above all else, Elden Ring is a Souls game, and herein honestly lies all my problems with it. Watching lore and story explained videos online made me realize that I love this game's universe, and I'm eager for any show or movie that might come out of it. But how I experience the story in this game? Nope. Not an experience that I'd even want to relive. <laughs> so, how do I get a 9 out of 10 out of that? Well, developer from software Souls games have pioneered a new era of unapologetic difficulty in gaming, and Elden Ring presents a world so massive that is an easy two points on anybody's scale. A big empty world is not worthy of accolade, but empty this world is not. Ripe for exploration, teeming with landmarks that beg you to venture into any direction. And I might, if it weren't for that previously mentioned difficulty. But difficulty on one side of the coin is challenging on the other. Elden Ring starts off as I imagine many Souls games do, with a skill check, but I'd prefer to describe this as a familiarity check. In my playthrough, I kept mentioning Cuphead, and how if you beat every boss the first time you encounter them, the game would clock in at just over half an hour. I described that the intention was for you not to be able to beat at least most of the bosses the first time. I recognize the philosophy. During these first encounters with a boss, you can only execute a well-timed dodge by guessing based on wind-up animations that maybe they're going to attack now, but you can never really know their patterns, your attack window, or the rhythm of these encounters until you see the boss in action. Every death comes with a lesson on how to better avoid, anticipate, and specifically when to attack. Or at least it should, and I imagine the people who can't get good refuse to embrace this. For years I've watched the impatience, corrupt people playing these games, coming so close to beating a boss, only to allow their impatience to get the better of them, to watch them get greedy and try to get that extra hit in, only to get fucked. And in that regard, I have to say thank you from software, you've given us no shortage of content of people screeching and reeing in response to their inability to get shit done in this game, at least this time around, but the expectation is that they'll try again. And all that entertainment is easily worth another point, am I right? 3 out of 10, easy. When a game people don't even have to play provides hours of entertainment because of people's frustration, come on, credit where credit is due. So. When you die, you drop the XP that you need to level up, and if you die again without getting back to get it, that XP's gone forever? Damn. A consequence for failure that'll really pucker some buttholes. I respect the demand for precision, but me? Historically, I've considered From Software's philosophy of borderline insta-killing players for like one mistake pretty cheap and I couldn't imagine wasting my time dying to a boss over and over and over and over again to study so I can dodge, roll in for ankle attacks, dodge, roll in for ankle attacks, dodge way back because of some, oh, it's a meteor coming down. <laughs> oh, geez, Morty, you know? 10 out of 10, though. No, and if I was gonna waste time, it would be in leveling up so I could come closer in power to the intentionally cheap one-shot bosses that populate this game. Little did I know 
that I'd have to assemble any number of Infinity Stones specific to the build that I would need. Unfortunately, with the game telling me as little as it did initially, I literally had to ask, how do I level up? <laughs> Only to find out later I needed to visit a certain amount of sites of grace before I had this ability granted to me. I get it from software. You want players to know that their place in this world is bitch. But my penis is not so small that I need to finesse every boss in your game and only play with the lowest level and the lowest weapons. <laughs> I just wanted to play your game, maybe see some locations, some sites, some boss designs, maybe even beat it. Yet, again and again I found myself acquainted with cheap, gotcha moments and one-shots that were honestly the video game equivalent of a lazy jump scare in a shitty horror movie. <laughs> Looking around corners and expecting to be shot in the back or sliced up out of nowhere with some fury swipes fucking attack out of a random no-name enemy isn't my idea of a good time, and I wasn't enjoying or taking in your scenery as I crept from room to room, half expecting the next clap. I repeatedly found myself at literal barriers so often that the only course of action if I valued my fucking time was to look it up online. Here's one of my favorites. You cannot proceed without the Ring of Oath. So when I look it up, I read this, and I quote, What is the Ring of Oath in Elden Ring? The Ring of Oath is actually known as the Dark Moon Ring in-game, which is likely why many fans are having a hard time locating the icon. How the fuck I'm supposed to know that? I'm not. I'm not supposed to know. And that's the way you want it, right, my man? So, I, I guess we're playing the rest of the game intelligently. No pun intended. If I could save clip... Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Even when I try to manipulate the environment, he can just clip right through it and the damage can reach through. I'm behind a pillar. I'm trying to get some magic. Yep, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now I'm I'm done. I'll admit it. After seeing bosses pivoting on one foot or attacks slipping through the environment, I even caught bosses that I just downed, reset to a standing position to attack because I was healing. I can't help but laugh. So after my 20th YouTube video guide and asking myself, how the hell am I supposed to know that? I have to ask myself how deep is this game? So many weapons and skills and abilities, incantations, I, I mean, I'm learning about dual wielding and power stancing, but I'm here to tell you I made it through the entire game having only used Bloodhound Step to dodge a greater distance. I'd never used Ashes of War, I'd never even found a quarter of the weapons in this game, I was certain of it, but I realized that the more I played and the more I understood, the more the next session would offer me, if there was gonna be a next session. Of course, I couldn't appreciate a picture that I could only decipher a portion of. My whole first playthrough was spent furious, feeling picked on, so I killed little birds on a beach for feathers hundreds of times. I ran down a cliffside avoiding Indiana Jones boulders hundreds of times. I shot at a big bird to get him to fall off a cliff hundreds of times. I did not let sleeping dragons lie, but I most importantly suspect that my experience is not unique. I'd wager close to 70% of the people who tried to get into this hearing 10 out of 10 that didn't get into any other Souls games were just like, what the hell is this? Souls veterans with prior knowledge of similar systems in old games and expertise on how to implement and experiment with these systems, maybe most of us were taking for granted because it was our first time encountering them. Y'all can appreciate easter eggs and references, but noobs like us, I'm like, man, who the fuck is Patches? He's attacking me now? <laughs> okay? 
My playthrough was not disciplined, informed, satisfying, or encouraging for me ever wanting to come back and do it again. And I imagine most people would play exactly as I did too. Pick the wrong class for their playstyle, level up the wrong stats, not understanding how they apply to the character, scrap the whole thing, thinking, oh, I fucked this one up, better start another one. The embarrassing lack of knowledge and inability to do simple things like upgrade a weapon or even see what status was affecting me doomed my playthrough to a salty, alcoholic bashing of what perplexingly was effortlessly game of the year. I'm now Elden Lord, but I remember the feeling of being a roach, scurrying through the lands between, hiding from the light of the Erd Tree. I remember my face the first time I saw Kaled. I remember setting the controller down after being killed by some no-name enemy that was clearly designed to outperform bosses. Who are these developers? What kind of sick, like, it's, it's kind of based, right? This is like, it's, it's at my expense. This would be so much more funny if I wasn't the joke's butt. I remember being lulled into a sense of security, properly conditioned into thinking that traveling to peaceful locations would never, you know, have anything go wrong, and boom, abruptly attacked by an invading NPC when all I had was the bow out. I wasn't ready. Do I get a second chance? No. The game laughing at me. Do you know I locked myself into the frenzied flame ending? I thought the subterranean shunning grounds were a necessary thing to progress and, and it, w it was actually optional, but I trudged through a nightmare, a uh, sewers and giant snails and giant rats and lobsters. Disgusting. Elden Ring may be one of the greatest games of all time for many individual reasons, but you know why? <laughs> You know why it's it's an effortless 10 out of 10 here? It's because this delivers the fans exactly what they hoped and dreamed for and more. And any fan of anything would kill to have passionate people so invested that they are actually delivering what the fans want. This is a Insomniac and Spider-Man type deal. This is a Rocksteady and the old Arkham games type deal. We're terrified they don't understand how to deliver anymore. But they used to. This wasn't just made by people getting a paycheck. It was made by people who like this shit. They do it because they like it. You remember when Daredevil said that? I do it because I like it. And part of you was like, are you, are you for real, Murdoch? <laughs> I think the biggest gripes I have with this game are built into the fact that it's a Souls game and think it would be selfish for me to expect changes or shifting and bending of what makes this game the game that the fans want. I also instantly recognize when people throw someone a bone, and these these America statues, man, allowing us to go straight back to the boss instead of having to walk all the way back, that's going to turn people who might shut it off into them giving it another try, and that that means a lot, and I appreciate it. It's, it's probably not true to the soul's suffering experience, but how could this not get a 10 out of 10? Elden Ring shipped as a meaty, complete game with no microtransactions. Elden Ring's the biggest game I or most people will ever play full stop. A game for the fans during a time when Every property seems to be allowing people to, that hate it to work on it and ruin it. You know, with, with ooh, no matter how much I run my mouth, I want to see what From Software does next. This game would have been perfect specifically for me if it had two things. Number one, if you could seamlessly join other Tarnish without some bitch-ass currency and then be able to stay with them even past the bosses, I've already heard of a PC mod that allows you to do just this. I wish From Software would make the multiplayer better because this would be game of the decade if they could fix it. We could ride our horses together. <sighs> The second one is quite simple, a character creator that allows us to be 
fully naked, dangly and floppy bits out as God intended. And I already know, modders have fixed this on PC. There's nothing like a battered, naked body to emphasize how akin to dirt from software clearly intends tarnished to feel. I hope From Software understands that it has the world's attention. I hope it pursues gritty future endeavors unrestrained and unrestricted. Elden Ring's exploration of depravity and unhinged and meticulous depictions of grotesque horrors are simultaneously nightmare inspirations and merchandise inspirations. I was nodding at every death with some of these going, wow, that's, that's creative. <laughs> when I played in a group, I realized I really liked this. And it's a shame From Software doesn't feel like creating some sort of dungeon experience for multiple, but isn't the groundwork kind of there? For that I I don't know I hate Elden Ring but there's so much in it that I love that I'm not only interested in an Elden Ring 2 so to speak but I'm curious if they add content to this congratulations to From Software Elden Ring is a masterpiece I'm eager to be involved with any fan Elden Ring projects or creations. If they don't screw up books or shows or movies about this, I'll be glad to look back at these frustrating interactions with characters whose significance to the story I barely even cared to understand as I slaughtered my way to the undisputed title of heavyweight Elden Lord and no lake of rot no flat-chested trans dude or intoxicatingly delicious perfect sculptures of beauty assaulting my dreams would stop me from realizing my place so i guess i give a shit about the game now that sucks i want to see what from software does next because as hate filled as my experience was i had a lot of fun too Here's a little bonus, because I'd rather show you than tell you that I had fun. Someone must extinguish thy flame. Let it be Margit the Fell. How did I do? How did I do? Did any 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 tips? Any pointers? He kinda do. <laughs> he kinda do one. <laughs> He's dead. But so am I. He's dead. That's not fair. But so am I. He's dead. That's not fair. But so am I. He's dead. But so am I. It's trying to stop targeting her, man. Stop. Thy fate lieth and a little wry. My dear daughter. I died. But so did you. You counting this for me? No? Didn't count it. He could keep me on the ground as soon as he touched me the one time. So I'm going to get away from this guy. 
far away. Look at this thing. You see that? You see that? You think he'll jump off this? <laughs> oh my gosh, Jesus Christ! <gasps> What's your problem? <laughs> Step into it if you dare. Fucking scared. Uh, why am I so slow? Oh. You just got magician. <laughs> Something just hit me, and I think it hit me from outside the door. I think something is outside, and is still aggroed. Yup. My mimic is fighting the guy outside the door. With range like this, I, 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 I can't outpace you on a horse, dude. On a horse, I can't outpace him. What the fuck am I supposed to do? He can cover half a football field with one back step. The whole game wants you to waste your time. Man, I don't know. I don't know. No. Mage. No. What the? No. So close. Wow. <laughs> he wasn't ready. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't even try. He didn't even try. <laughs> I do this for the fallen. No. My Bruce. My Bruce. They were in the trees, man. They were in the trees, man. You're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Gee. <laughs> yeah. To a soul's virgin like me, Elden Ring has a laundry list of bullshit that I would consider absolutely unacceptable if the boss encounters weren't so bizarrely inconsistent at times. But... I'm willing to blame the game as reacting to my inputs, and after completing the game, I'm forced to recognize that this is the result of Souls game being Souls game, an infinitely memeable salt generator. I would never have tolerated a boss clipping through walls, but Souls fans did, and do, because the magnificence outweighs the bullshit. Is this a 10 out of 10 for everybody? Hell no. But if you're a masochist, even to a small degree, this might be for you. And it's going to fit some of you like a glove. I got to play my way. I was encouraged, not punished. I'm okay with being jealous of developers delivering for their fans. The gaming industry is no doubt going to learn entirely the wrong lesson from this game's success. When making money, pleasing fans and securing future purchases would be as simple as giving players what they want and have vocally asked for. That's what From Software did, and it has earned its 10 out of 10. Thanks for listening. <laughs>